Hi, I'm Tara Saproni. I've been working at the Western Ag Credit Evanston office for the past 19 years, and I'm currently the branch manager there. And today I'm here to talk about the process for a loan application with Western Ag Credit. So the first step for getting a loan with Western Ag Credit is getting to know each other and building a relationship. So let's start with a little bit of background information about Western Ag Credit and what we stand for. So Western Ag Credit is a borrower-owned cooperative that is a part of the farm credit system, which was originated by Congress in 1916. In 2016, we just celebrated our 100-year anniversary. Western Ag Credit's mission statement is to provide the most dependable source of credit and related services to agriculture and the rural community. Congress set up Farm Credit System in 1916 as a cooperative to ensure that the system could fulfill its mission of long-term affordable credit services to agriculture and the rural America. We stand behind seven cooperative principles. One is voluntary and open membership. Two, democratic member control. Three, members' economic participation. Four, is autonomy and independence. Five is education and training and information. Six is cooperation among cooperatives. And seven is concern for community. Democratic member control. What is that? Well, Western Ag Credit is owned and controlled by the farmers and ranchers who borrow from it. A board of directors is elected from our member borrower group, along with two outside directors, and the board of directors is responsible for representing the best interests of the organization and its borrowers. Let me say that again. Our board of directors is comprised of farmers and ranchers, your local neighbors, who actually understand our agricultural environment. So what risks we're at, whether we're going through flooding or a drought. The Board of Directors for Western Ag Credit is your local neighbors. Members' economic participation. Members contribute equally to and democratically control the capital of the cooperative. This economic participation is established through membership stock. Western Ag Credit membership stock contribution is 2% of the loan amount up to an outstanding amount of $1,000 Western Ag Credit stock. So, when you're a brand new borrower with Western Ag Credit and you're first establishing a, a relationship and a loan, your loan amount will be increased to cover 2% of your loan amount up to an outstanding of $1,000 in capital stock per membership group. So for example, if we have a $10,000 loan, 2% of capital stock is $200, so your loan amount would be $10,200 to have that $200 of Western Ag Credit stock. If you have a $100,000 loan and it's 2% of capital, 2% of stock for the $100,000 loan, that would be $2,000. However, our cap on Western Ag Credit stock is $1,000. So a $100,000 loan would be $1,000 of stock, so your loan would be in the amount of $100,000. $1, what happens when you are done borrowing from Western Ag Credit? Once you have paid off all of your loans with Western Ag Credit, you actually get your stock back. It is retired and, and received back to you. Cooperative patronage. Since the customers own the association, Western Ag Credit shares the profits the company makes with the shareholders through the patronage program. Patronage payment is dispersed by a qualified distribution determined by the board of directors on an annual basis. Western Ag Credit is committed to our cooperative values. Historically, the board has paid patronage in the amount of 75 basis points, or in other words, three quarters of percent of an interest is paid back to our stockholders through our patronage check. And that patronage check comes to our stockholders twice a year. There will be a slide that shows you historically, say over the past 10 years, what we have been paying out in patronage. I'd like to bring your attention to this. If you remember 2008, the Great Recession, when a lot of commercial banks couldn't lend you money, not only was Western Ag Credit strong in lending you money, we also paid patronage back. So 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, we were paying patronage checks back to our stockholders, our borrowers. Let's talk about the application process. Let's understand what documentations you need to bring, understanding what the loan officer will be looking at, 
And a key point that you should understand is that a benefit of working with Western Ag Credit is that you are working directly with the individual who has the authority to approve your loan, not somebody you don't know off-site that you have never visited with. The local loan officer will be the one approving your loan. So here's what to expect. To begin a loan application, the following information is required. First of all, we'll start with having you sign a credit authorization. All individuals will sign this, and that allows us to go ahead and pull a credit report and do verifications of deposits and loans that are out there. We also need a copy of a driver's license for all individuals that will sign on the loan. Then we're going to start asking for financial information. Financial information such as your balance sheets, your income statements, tax returns, and if there's an entity, an LLC, a corporation, those entity documents will also need a copy of. Western Ag Credit looks at your loan on an individual basis. It's personalized to you. We don't require the same amount of information for a small borrower as we do for a large borrower. Not all loans are requiring the same amount of information. We call this differential analysis. Different sizing for different size risk. Different analysis for the different size risk. So if you are a smaller loan with lower risk, say $150,000 loan application and less, we might only require one year's balance sheet and one year's tax return. If you're a medium-sized loan, say up to $750,000, we might require three years tax returns and, if possible, three years balance sheets. And if you're a larger size loan, well, obviously we need a little bit more in depth. So if you're, say, over a million dollars, we'll ask for five years tax returns and, if possible, past years of balance sheets. It helps us get to understand the trend of your operation. Once you're visiting with your loan officer, that loan officer will be able to understand how much financial information we need from you. Cooperative effort. Now it's your part. You, the applicant, need to sell your case so that together we can help build your dream. Leaders plan. You are the leader of your operation. Do some prep work to help you be prepared for some of the questions that your loan officer might be asking you. Some of the prep work are some management tools that you'd like might be beneficial to prepare you, such as understanding what cash flow budgeting is, business plan, developing a budget, understanding your net worth, understanding debt to equity. A cash flow budget. We'll highlight this because in another presentation you'll have a little bit more detailed information about it. But a cash flow budget, if you prepare a cash flow budget before you meet with your loan officer, it helps you to think about through the operation plan for the year. It tests your operation income to determine if you will be able to meet your obligations. It helps you project how much operating credit you will need and when you can repay the debt. A business plan. Just take a few minutes to think about your business plan. Have you prepared a business plan? What is your mission? I've already stated Western Ag Credits. What is your goal? What are the products and services you will provide? How do you plan on marketing those services? Developing a budget. What is covered in a developing a budget is your operating costs. What's your expected income? What happens when commodity prices fall? We just recently came off of a high, high commodity strength prices. They just fell half off. What's going to happen if your expenses don't change and you only have half the income? Will you be able to repay your loan? What are your expectations and are they reasonable? A couple of key ratios that would be helpful for you to understand. Net worth. It's your assets minus your liabilities equals your owner's equity your net worth. Debt to equity is your total liabilities divided by your equity. If you have a ratio of over one to one of a debt to equity, it means that you owe somebody more of the ownership in your business. Being prepared to answer the difficult questions can and does make a difference on getting your application approved or denied. Now that you've understood what you need to be prepared for, let me explain what the loan officer goes through, what they'll be looking for. The loan officer begins to do the loan analysis process. Loan analysis process involves understanding your loan purpose. The loan officer will start to look at your financial analysis. We'll start reviewing your collateral analysis and understanding your character analysis. The loan officer will ask you what the loan proceeds are to be used for. Is this a replacement? Or is this an expansion? We need to make sure that the loan is termed to the way your purpose of your, your loan request is for. 
How will a loan affect your future repayment? And as I mentioned before, Western Ag Credit is a part of the farm credit system, and we have an eligibility requirement to make sure that all of our loans have an ag purpose to it. You recently saw a presentation of the five C's of credit, so I'll recap the balance sheet. We will prepare a balance sheet with you and go over the most recent or most current statement, and that statement's values must be off of market values. As mentioned prior, we just came off of a strong commodity pricing. We need to have current market pricing, which is actually lower than the strength that was out there before. Historical statements, if they're available, they help us to understand how you did through the rise and fall of a commodity pricing. We do accept personal accounting programs. If you have Peachtree, Quicken, QuickBooks, we can get copies of those, but we still need to make sure that they are set at the market value statements. Income statements. We like to have a history of them. That's your tax returns or your profit and loss. We can use the QuickBooks, Quicken, and Peachtree. We need to have year-end uh, income statements. If we get an income statement or a profit and loss mid-year, and let's say you're a cow-calf operation, and we get a mid-year income statement as of August, well, that will reflect all of your expenses to date but your income coming from the cows and calves won't come in until the fall, late October. So it was, don't, does not give us a clear picture. So we need year-end income statements or profit and loss statements. Projections. This is one of those time-consuming projects that a loan officer goes through because we want to make sure that whatever your loan application is for, we're taking in consideration what that project is for. So when we were talking about the purpose of your loan, let's say you're a dairy operator and you you're going to maintain the same amount of dairy cows, but you want to build, get a loan for a facility for a new dairy. Well, if you have the same amount of cows, you're going to have the same amount of income, but when we look at the projections, we now need to take into consideration the cost of that facility, how you're going to repay that loan that's building that facility. So projections is time consuming and you, your loan officer might ask considerable questions of you so that we make sure that we understand the clear picture of what you're going for. We need a documented, well thought out plan. Cash flow projections that show the impact of the loan. Collateral. A previous video talked about the collateral. Loan terms cannot outlive the collateral. If you have put up considerable amount of collateral for your loan, it is actually a benefit to you because it can help you in your interest rate. So if we have surplus amount of collateral, it can lean to, lead to a better interest rate. We take various types of collateral, such as real estate, water stock, livestock, grazing permits, crops, equipment. Let's start with the real estate collateral. If you are interested in getting a loan and you want to use the real estate that you're purchasing, here's some of the information and the steps that we'll need to go through for a real estate loan. We'll start out with a, uh, asking for a title policy. We'll need information such as parcel numbers and legal descriptions. A title policy ensures that we have clear access to the property, that there's easements out there if necessary, and that there's clean title that can be transferred. We'll need to get the title policy before we can order the appraisal. We'll also need to know about water stock. Do you have water stock certificates? Do you have water rights involved? If you do have water stock certificates or there will be water stock that's transferring with this loan, we'll need to start with a copy of that certificate. If you're purchasing the land, we'd like to see a copy of the purchase contract. It helps the appraisers to understand what you're willing to pay for the loan and what the sellers are selling the loan for. Personal property. There's livestock, so we'll get a herd list from the balance sheet. We'll have our loan officers or appraisers come out and do an on-site inspection for the herd. We can take, if you're doing a loan to purchase or increase your herd, we can take collateral on the herd that you're purchasing and the feeders to be purchased. Normal livestock loans are permed out usually about five to seven years. It's based on the herd and not the, market, or not the marketable livestock that will turn over in a year. Water stock, we can do water stock term loans up to 10 years. Remember, we'll need the original water stock certificate. We take equipment as collateral. So if you're buying equipment from an, a dealer, we'll accept the invoice, and the invoice will have the year, the make, the model, 
the serial number, the hours on the tractor. If you're putting up your piece of equipment, equipment as collateral for a loan, we'll need the same amount of information, the year, make, model, serial number. We'll do an inspection to see the condition of the equipment. We do term our equipment loans out to the condition of the equipment, the collateral value. So if it's used equipment, we can go up to five years. Newer equipment, up to seven years. And if we're taking pivot or irrigation equipment, we can go to a term of 10 years. We also do accept crops, accounts receivable, and inventory as collateral on operating loans. Personal property collateral, it is the normal policy for Western Ag Credit to cross-collateralize. So let, for example, you're starting brand new with Western Ag Credit and you need a loan just to purchase a tractor. So we take the tractor as collateral. A couple of years down the road, you decide now you want to purchase some production livestock, some cows. It's the normal policy to, for Western Ag Credit to go ahead and cross-collateralize. So that new livestock loan that you have will use the equipment, the equity in the equipment, as well as the livestock. It's beneficial to you because, again, if we have good, strong collateral position, it can help on your interest rate. However, we can finance equipment as single pieces of, of a collateral on a note by itself. But let's talk about open lines of communication with your operation. It's crucial that all parties are involved and understand the loan process and objective. Consider if something were to happen to the primary operator. Would the spouse or anyone else know how to continue the operation? We recommend that you consider preparing a contact sheet listing all of your business partners. Examples are where you finance through, your bank information, who's your insurance agent, how about the veterinarian? Keep your passwords and your account information secure, but let all parties who help on this operation have that access to that information resource. Through cooperative effort, the applicant and Western Ag Credit work towards a resolution that provides constructive credit for your agricultural needs. Should you have any questions, please feel free to visit any one of our local branches and visit with a loan officer.